taking a look at a few of the optimization problems here in section 4.7. Uh, this is number seven, uh, where it's asking us to find the dimensions of a rectangle of maximum area that can be inscribed inside of a circle with a radius of 13. And it doesn't give us the units on that 13. So just 13, whatever the units are. Now, I went ahead and drawn out the situation that they have in the problem. And since I know that area of a rectangle is just length times the width, I needed to go ahead and put that in terms of X and Y. Now, in relation to what I know in the problem, I was only given that the radius of the circle had to be 13 units. So I thought, well, if that R value has to be 13, then I know that I could call the distance to the side of the rectangle X, and then half of the distance of, to the top of the rectangle would be Y. So then I can say, well, I could form a triangle in here, and since I'm forming a triangle, I can say, well, okay, I know that X squared plus Y squared has to equal R squared due to, due to the Pythagorean theorem. Now, if you look at this drawing, and I say, well, what's the area of that arbitrary rectangle within this region? You know it has to be two times X, because if X is the distance from the center of that circle, it's also the distance from the center of the rectangle to a side of the rectangle, then the full length of that would be two X. Now, the full height of that rectangle, or the width of it, you would say, well, if Y is the distance from halfway up to all the way up, then the whole distance is 2Y. So you'll see I just have the area formula for the rectangle as 2X times 2Y. Now the problem with that area formula is you need to have it in terms of one variable if you're ever hoping to optimize it. Well, I used that concept of, well, we have a triangle inside of this rectangle to set up X squared plus Y squared is equal to 13 squared, since my radius value is 13 in this problem. And then that allowed me to say, well, 13 squared is just 169, so Y squared is 169 minus X squared. We know Y is the positive square root of 169 minus X squared. So then I went back to my area formula and I said, let's get this area formula solely in terms of X. I knew that I had four X Y. Well, that becomes four X times what Y is equivalent to in terms of X, the square root function. Now I come down here and I can say, well, I know if I'm ever hoping to maximize that, I'm going to have to take the first derivative and find the critical points. So here's where I did that in the problem. I said, all right, the first derivative, I thought of this as a product rule. We have the derivative of 4x is 4 times the second plus 4x and then times the derivative of the second. We know that that's just the group to the one half power. So I brought the one half down in front times the group to the negative one half power times the derivative of what's inside of that group, the negative 2x there. So now I have my derivative correctly taken. It's just a matter of I need to get it in a format to be able to do something with it. So I just brought my first term over. That second term, uh, what I did there is I said, well, I know x times x is going to give me an x squared. Uh, this 2 and 1 half are going to cancel, but I do have a factor of a negative in there. That's why this changed to a minus sign. And I'm just going to have minus 4x to the second and then this term goes to the denominator as the square root of 169 minus x squared. Again, we set that equal to zero to find the critical points. So this is not hard to set equal to zero because all I need to do is move this expression to the right-hand side, it becomes positive. Then from this step to this step, I saw, well, both sides have a factor of four, so I can just divide both sides by four. And at the same time, I went ahead and multiplied by the square root of 169 minus x squared on both sides. When I multiply that on the right, I'm just left with x squared. Again, remember, the four canceled out on both sides. And when I multiply by that square root on the left-hand side, you have the group 169 minus x squared remaining to the first power, because any square root times itself is the terms on the inside to the first power. So now that uh, made a nice equation to solve out. I could add x squared to both sides to get 2x squared is equal to 169. Then I would divide both sides by 2 to get x squared equals 169 over 2. So x is going to be the square root of that 169 over 2. 
square root of 169 is 13. Square root of two is an irrational number, so I just left it as that. I chose to go ahead and rationalize that by multiplying by the root of two over the root of two to give me a simplified answer of x is equal to three on the root of two over two. Now, in order to get to the y value, I knew y was the square root of 169 minus x squared, so I just said, well, okay, y is the square root of 169. We already know x squared is 169 over two. So this is 169 minus a half of 169. Well, clearly, that takes you back to a half of 169 inside the square root, which is the exact same expression we had for x. So all that's telling you is that, well, the maximum dimensions of the rectangle are, are on the inside or when the rectangle is a square, because both the x and y components here needs to be 13 on the root of 2 over 2. But now be careful. Achieve is asking the question, what are the lengths of the sides for maximum area? And you say, well, the lengths of the sides are not x and y. x and y are the dimensions of this triangle. So you say, well, the dimensions of the rectangle on the, on the inside are 2x by 2x. And so you could just say, well, we just take each of these answers, multiply by 2. So in other words, it's just the numerator. The uh, length is going to be 13 on the root of 2, and the width is going to be 13 on the root of 2. So now I could go back to achieve and say, well, the length of the sides, and it says enter the values for the width and height of the rectangle as a comma separated list. So exactly what I have right here, I'll just enter it like that. Achieve is one in commas between the two. So I'll say 13 on the root of two, comma 13 on the root of two, and that should be precisely what they want. I'll come down here and put that in. 13 square root of 2, and then comma, again, 13 on the root of 2. That's what we do. I'll check that answer, and the chief says, you got it. Next question here. We had a question on number 8, and I could see why there was difficulty on number 8. It's, it's, it's a good problem. So I'll go ahead and show my work that I did to think about this one. Uh, we had a problem like this in my notes where I uh, had a problem dealing with a dune buggy and trying to find the minimum time to get to the finish line. This is a similar problem. It says, in the article, Do Dogs Know Calculus? by author Timothy Pennings explained how he knew that when he threw a ball diagonally into Lake Michigan along a straight shoreline, his dog Elvis seemed to pick the optimal point in which to enter the water so as to minimize his time to reach the ball. He timed the dog and found Elvis could run 6.4 meters per second on the sand and swim at only 0.86 meters per second. If Tim stood at point A and threw the ball to point B in the water, which was perpendicular distance from point C on the shore, where C is a distance of 15 meters from where he stood, uh, at what distance X from the point C did Elvis enter the water if the dog effectively minimized his time to reach the ball? Okay, so we're looking for the total minimum time to get from point A to point B. You probably shouldn't just go straight from A to B because that would be the entire time spent in the water where he can, where he can only swim at 0.86 meters per second. But if he goes along the shoreline, he can run at a rate of 6.4 meters per second, so much uh, more quickly. So there's probably some point D along this shoreline at which he'll stop going on the shoreline and then go into the water, or perhaps he should go the entire distance to C, and if that's the case, X is going to be zero. So here's what I was thinking about in this case. First thing I did is I figured out what this diag or not, well, it is a diagonal line, but what this dotted line here is going to represent. And that's clearly it's representing the distance that he's going to swim in the water. That distance swam in the water is at a very minimum of 10. And it could be uh, the square root of 10 squared plus 15 squared if he's going to swim the entire distance in the water. But you say, well, there's probably some value x at which he's cutting short his path on the shoreline. So I'll just say the distance in the water is the square root of it's the hypotenuse here, so you'd say, well, anytime you have the hypotenuse, it's the square root of the sum of the square of the side, so 
x squared plus 10 squared becomes square root of x squared plus 100. Now again, remember, if x is zero, that can represent him going all the way to c and then straight to d. If x is equal to 15, well, that can represent your other scenario. He's swimming the entire distance in the water, and it can represent any scenario in between. So we're trying to solve for what x is in this case in order to minimize the total travel time. So that's what I'm thinking about here. I'm saying the total time. It's the time that you're going to, or the time that the dog spends along the shore running, plus the time that the dog spends in the water swimming. So clearly, I know that distance is equal to rate times time. So time is equal to distance divided by the rate. I want to get the time with respect to x, where x is the number of meters he's going to cut short the path to point C. So you say, okay, then the time on the shore is going to be distance on the shore. Well, the entire distance on the shore would be 15 meters. The distance that he's going to have to run on the shore, it could be 15, but it could also be 15 minus whatever x is. So I'll say, okay, we'll have a time on the shore. It's going to be distance on the shore, 15 minus x divided by the rate at which he can run on the shore, that's your 6.4 meters per second, plus the distance in the water. Well, we've already said the distance in the water is that square root of x squared plus 100 divided by the rate that he can swim in the water of 0.86. Now, just to make this easier to take the derivative, I went ahead and distributed 6.4 into both of those terms to get 15 over 6.4, minus one over 6.4 times x. Notice how much easier that's going to be to take the derivative. I don't have to use the quotient rule here. Similarly here, I said, well, this is the same thing as one over 0.86 times the group x squared plus 100 to the one half power. Now that I've done that, it makes the derivative process much easier. So I'll say, looking at this, I want to take the derivative. Derivative of any constant is zero. This is just derivative of a linear function. The one comes down, you get your uh, minus one over 6.4 x to the zero, or just minus one over 6.4. This one, the one half came down, and I said, well, that two is gonna multiply the 0.86. That's where I got the 1.72 in the denominator here. So I had one over 1.72 times the group x squared plus 100 to the negative one half power. But then I had to multiply by the derivative of the inside of that, and that's where the 2x came from. Now, what I did from here to here is just simplify. This last term, I know that this is going to be a square root in the denominator. This 2 multiplies the 1 over 7.2, and it takes me back to 1 over 8.6. So I could have just said the 1 half and the 2 cancel. Just keep your 1 over 0.86 here. Um, and then I also have a factor of x that had to go into that numerator. So it gives me x over 0.86 on the square root of x squared plus 100 for that second term. Here's my entire first derivative now. I need to set that equal to zero to find the critical points. Again, not bad. You can say, well, I'll keep this term on the left-hand side since it's already positive. I move this to the right, it becomes positive. And then at that point, what I did uh, was I said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and multiply by 0.86 in the square root of x squared plus 100 on both sides. And so when I multiplied by that 0.86, I just said, well, that's going to go up into your numerator. And, and I had, well, I'll show you here, guys, 1 over 6.4. And then I multiplied by 0.86. And I just said, let's get that into a better looking fraction. That's where my 43 over 320 came from there. And of course, when I multiply by the square root of on, on each side, I got the 43 over 320 times the square root of x squared plus 100. I chose to get the fraction just because I think it looks neater. You could have kept the decimal. At this point, I just squared both sides. I said, I cannot solve for x as long as it's inside of a square root. I must square both sides. Uh, and that fraction, 43 over 20, your calculator probably will not square it really well as is. So like if I tried to square that answer, and I don't think it would convert back to a fraction, it doesn't. So what I did there to get to the next step is I just simply said 43 squared, the numerator is 1849, my denominator was 320 squared for uh, my 102,400. I wanted to keep a nice fraction there. 
And then the square root squared just gave me x squared plus 100. Now, from this point to this point, I said, well, I know I'm going to have a term of x squared on both sides. This is understood to be 1x squared, which is 102,400 over 102,400. So where I got this coefficient is I said, well, the numerator of this side then is going to be 102,400 minus the 1849. And that's where I got this numerator. So I'm going to have 100,551 over 102,400 x squared is equal to 1849 over 102,400 times 100. This 100, when I multiplied by that, it just reduced the denominator down by a factor of 100. That's why you see the 1,024 down there. So now it was easy to solve for x. I can say, well, x squared is equal to the fraction that was already on the right, multiplied by the reciprocal of its coefficient, and I just went into the calculator, took the square root of that answer, and got my 1.36. So this is telling me that the dog should cut uh, uh, short the path 1.36 meters short of the full distance C. So in other words, he should run a 13.64 meters out and then go into the water. Uh, in order to answer the question here on achieve, let's see, I think it's just wanting that X value. Yeah, Elvis entered the water a distance of blank meters from point C. Well, that's what we have, 1.36 meters. And the meters is already in there. I should be able to check this, and it should be happy with that. Nice. Okay. Up next, I want to look at number nine with you. And there's a trick to number nine. Number nine is hard if you don't understand, or if you don't use the trick, but it's extremely easy if you do. Here's the trick. So it's asking me uh, to find the point on the line y equals 4x. So we have that linear equation. We want the point on that line that's closest to the ordered pair 1, 0 in the plane. Okay. So I went in and I just said, well, I know that any point on the line y equals 4x, y is always 4 times whatever the x value. So if I go to some arbitrary value of x, I know the y value at that point is 4x. So then if I ask you what's the distance between x, 4x, and the ordered pair 1, 0, you could say, well, the distance formula gives me that. The distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared. So I go into here and I can say, well, the distance formula then is the square root of x2 minus x1. That'd be x minus 1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1, 4x minus 0 quantity squared. And then I can say, well, okay, that would be my distance formula. But now, why don't I want to work with that? Because I'm thinking I'd rather not have to deal with the square root of those. And I was thinking that, well, wherever the distance would have a minimum, the square of the distance would have a minimum. So that's what I put here in red. D has a minimum whenever D squared has a minimum. So I just went ahead and I said, well, let's just square both sides of that distance formula and solve for when for, for what value of x minimizes d squared, and that same value will minimize d. So this is just the easier version of that. And I can say, well, then I can ignore the square root and just say x minus 1 squared plus the quantity 4x quantity squared. x minus 1 squared would be x squared minus 2x plus 1. We're adding to that 16x to the second. 16x to the second plus x to the second gave me 17x to the second. Then you see the other two terms from foiling out this first one, the minus 2x and the plus 1. Now I know, hey, that's a quadratic. It's extremely easy to find the minimum of a quadratic. I just take the derivative, set it equal to 0. I know that critical point's going to minimize it. That's precisely what I do. The derivative of the square of the distance formula here is just going to be 34x minus 2. I set that equal to 0 to find the critical points. Move the 2 to the right-hand side, 34x is equal to 2. Therefore, x is equal to 2 over 34, which reduces down to 1 17th. You can say, so if x is now 1 17th, we know y is 4 times that size. It's going to be 4 over 17. And so you can say, well, you, you've got your point on the line. The point on the line that's closest to 1 0 is the ordered pair 1 over 17 
four over 17. So now if I try to go in here and put that, I'll say, well, we have one over 17 comma four over, ooh, make sure you separate out your comma, four over 17. Yes, that should work. And I'll check that answer and it's liking it. Uh, okay, last one in this section, number 10. Again, this is one of those problems that you need to draw out and make sense out of it, and then it's really not that bad. So this problem is asking or telling me that I have a poster of an area 600 square centimeters, and it's going to have blank margins of 10 centimeters wide. So I went ahead and said 10 centimeters wide at the top and bottom and six centimeters wide margins at each of the sides. I'm supposed to find the dimensions that maximize the printed area. So the printed area are going to be on the inside. The function I'm trying to maximize here, and I just went ahead and said, well, let's let X be the horizontal distance of the inside and let's Y be the vertical distance of the inside. What I'm trying to maximize is the area of the printed region on the inside that's a maximum. So my, my function is area is equal to X times Y. But you might be thinking, well, you can't maximize that as long as you leave it X and Y. Of course not. So now I want to get this in terms of just X. So what I know here from the problem is it says that the poster area is 6,000 square centimeters. That's what I put right here. We know, and what did I do here? I just said, well, the area of the whole poster would be the full width times the full height. And you'd say, well, the full width is gonna be X plus six plus six. So I got X plus 12. The full height would be Y plus 10 plus 10 for Y plus 20. We know that X plus 12 times Y plus 20 has to be 6,000 here. So I went ahead and foiled out my left-hand side. XY plus 20X, plus 12y, and then 12 times 20 for the 240 has to equal 6,000. From this step to this step, I kept my terms of y on the same side and factored it out. So I said, I know I'm gonna have xy plus 12y. Let's go ahead and factor a y out of that and it's gonna leave x plus 12. At the same time, I moved the other two terms over to the right and had 6,000 minus 240 minus 20x. We know 6,000 minus 240 is just gonna be 5,760 minus the 20X. And then you can solve for Y by dividing by that X plus 12 on both sides. You have to say, okay, now this is my function solve for Y. So then I can set up an area function solely in terms of X and say, well, we know it was X times Y. Now it's gonna be X times what we know Y is equal to here. I went ahead and distributed that X throughout the numerator. I would prefer not to have to do the product rule on this problem and the quotient rule within it. So I just went ahead and distributed to get to this. And then I said, okay, now I need to take the derivative of that and try to find the critical points where the derivative is equal to zero. So derivative, squared the denominator, brought that denominator up to the numerator times the derivative of the numerator. We know derivative of the first term is 5760, derivative of the second term minus 40x. So the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, of course, derivative of x is just one. Uh, so I have my derivative taken correctly, and but I was thinking, okay, in this step, it'd be too hard to set it equal to zero. So let's simplify that uh, numerator. I went ahead and foiled out in the first uh, two binomials, and then I kept or distributed my negative throughout the two signs in the second one. So I have 5,760x minus 40x squared, 12 times 5760 was 69,120. Then I would have minus 480x minus 5,760x, and then it would be plus a 20x squared. Now, all of this is still over your x plus 12 quantity squared. In that numerator, I collected like terms. I had a minus 40x plus 20x, so that gave me minus 20x. Uh, these 5,760x's canceled, but I had still minus 480x. And then, of course, I had the plus 69,120 term up there. 
all over that denominator. I needed to set that equal to zero. Well, I know that the denominator is completely irrelevant. It's not going to make the fraction equal zero, only the numerator can. So I went ahead and said, well, I'm gonna to need to set that numerator equal to zero. It's much easier to set equal to zero if you can factor it. Well, just to see if I could factor it, I, I, I saw that all of these terms were multiples of negative 20. So the first thing I did is I factored a negative 20 out of that, it gave me positive x squared, negative 480 divided by negative 20 gave me a positive 24. And then when I divided a negative 20 into the positive 69, 120, I got a negative 3,456. But at that point, I was still looking at that and saying, yeah, I'm not going to be factoring that quadratic still. So I chickened out and did the quadratic formula. So whenever I set this equal to zero, I just said x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over to a. And I put that in the denominator. I just went to my calculator now. Uh, honestly, what I did is I just went into the square root part and I just said, well, that's gonna be 24 squared plus four times 3456. And I know that that's 14,400. I recognized that was a perfect square and I get the 120. So I said, well, I know that my numerator is gonna be negative 24 plus or minus 120 over two. If it's negative 24 plus 120, you get your 96 over two, which gives you X equals 48. Now the answer that doesn't make sense in this case is, well, what if it's the minus 120? Then you get a negative 144 divided by two and your value for X would be negative 72. So it's saying, hey, the maximum area occurs when the inside area uh, has a width of negative 72. You say, well, it's a dimension of width, it can't be negative. So I just discarded that answer. It's not within the domain of the feasible, feasible region of this problem, ignored that one. So I knew that this maximum area was going to occur when X is 48. So then I went back and I said, well, I have a formula for Y right here. All I've done is I've plugged 48 into this formula. You'll see Y evaluated at 48 is gonna be 5,760 minus, let's see if I can make this show both at the same time, yeah. So I just said minus 20 times 48 over 48 plus 12 down here. So that ended up giving me an 80 for the Y value. Now again, you've got to be extremely careful. Uh, a lot of people, myself included, would tend to want to put, hey, 48 and 80 for the dimensions that work. But Achieve is saying, what are the dimensions of the overall page in order to maximize the, uh, the, the printing area on the inside? So the printing area on the inside is 48 by 80. But the whole page, you can say, well, the width of the page has to be the middle part, the 48, the X value, plus six, plus six, that's where I'm getting plus 12 is 60. And then the length, the length has to be 80 centimeters, plus 10, plus 10 for plus 20. We should be getting 100 centimeters for the height of the page. So I go in here, width should be 60, the height should be 100, and that should satisfy this problem. Boom, yes. Hopefully this helps uh, these problems in this section make sense. I love, love, love this section. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. I'll be glad to help out.